This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Prime. In association with Micromax. Nothing like anything. Mumbai is known as the high-rise capital of India. But when looking at the tall buildings in the city, little does one think of the machines that make such skyscrapers possible. I'm talking about elevators and escalators, the driving force of the vertical transportation industry. Is it any wonder then that the prestigious International Elevator and Escalator Expo 2014 is taking place here in Mumbai? Mumbai and Maharashtra per se is the largest consumer for the elevator escalator market. And this event, and if you look at the vertical growth which is there in this part of uh, this part of country, is the most encouraging. So, if this event, if it does not happen here, it will lose its relevance. The fifth International Elevator Expo is a unique chance for leading industry players to showcase the most groundbreaking and innovative advances in the vertical transportation sector, and allow experts and the public to source new equipment, explore tie-ups, engage with the right audience and find app solution providers and partners for future projects. Concerned the architects who want to know more about the products, so they get details from us. And customers, like direct builders, want to know about our delivery, about our strength on uh, after-sales service, which we explain to them in the, uh, in the venue here. From high-speed elevators to home lifts, from creative interiors to environmentally friendly and energy-saving designs, the IEE Expo serves as a unique platform to showcase products and technologies that cater to every aspect of the industry. The IEE Expo is also the perfect chance for these players to improve their brand image and build valuable leads to expand their business. This, this you know, kind of a platform, uh, you know, it is only the branding. The brandings are done, the, you know, in this type of uh, platform where, you know, people can come to know the product, the company, the name, being the only expo in India focused on elevator and escalator technology, the exhibition attracted many national as well as international participants. The sheer size, scale and efficiency of the expo left visitors from neighbouring China impressed. Mumbai is a very good place, very good uh, meeting point for the, uh, the South Asia country people and for the whole world to uh, go to the Indian market, the gateway to the, the next uh, emerging biggest uh, market. The Expo is a chance for industry players from across the world to gauge the market potential for their products in India. Coming at a time when Mumbai is engaged in massive redevelopment schemes, the Expo was perfectly timed to capture the imagination of the market. It is a, a good opportunity to catch the market also and the people and the consumer also can come here and see what is available in the global market. With a mix of the best names and the widest lineup of products, services and opportunities in the elevator and escalator landscape of India, the IE Expo has emerged as the definitive expo for the vertical transportation sector in India. Mumbai is struggling with issues of lack of land and infrastructure. And in this scenario, the Maharashtra government turned to the cluster development policy to solve Mumbai's problem. But can this policy actually solve Mumbai's problem? Can it be lucrative enough to attract the developers and also the homeowners? To talk about this, to discuss this, we have with us this esteemed panel. Let me please introduce you to them. We have uh, Mr. Rajendra Chaturvedi. He is the chairman and MD, Shripati Group. We have uh, Mr. Chandresh Mehta. He is director, Rustamji Group. We have Mr. Jagdish Ahuja. He is chairman, Ahuja Constructions. We have Dipesh Bhagdani. He is executive director of uh, JC Homes. And we also have Mr. Kutub Mandiwala. He is a principal architect, Mandiwala Kutub and Associates. So, gentlemen, welcome. First, we would like to know from you, what do you think? What is your general feeling about this policy? Is it actually going to be an answer to the problems of Mumbai's realty? Cluster is a solution for Bombay, no doubt about it. It's a good policy, but still there are some issues which are to be dealt in detail. Uh, in fact, unless until those issues are tackled, again this policy will die from death. So, there are 
major issue what has to be dealt like. Uh, it's one is one of the major issue is each cluster of its own has various problems by its own. And you cannot frame guidelines for each and every small issue here and there. So you should have a URA sort of thing. Once there is a URA like an FRA, so the chief executive officer is being empowered to solve all the issues what comes there in the problem. Once you be there, the basic fundamental guideline can be there in place like FFI, incident FFI, open spaces, those planning issues could be dealt there. But all the small issues related day to day affairs, you cannot pinpoint each and everything because each and every cluster have a different shape, size, different tenement density, different shape of the plot, different problems arriving out of the cluster. So those issues are to be sorted out by the chief executive officer hmm. on day-to-day -day basis. We need not to run to government, we need not to run to high power committee every now and then for small issues. Uh, Mr. Mehta, do you think the, uh, the issues that uh, Mr. Chaturvedi is uh, raising is because here we are talking about developing a larger area vis-a-vis -vis, uh, just one building. So is that the issue or uh, these issues are policy issues only? Uh, so there are two parts to it. Uh, the policy in itself is a good policy, but any policy which does not dwell into the implementation just becomes another policy on paper. Uh, the ground reality is starkly different from what uh, uh, the policy talks about. Uh, as Mr. Chaturvedi said, uh, you require some authority who has uh, powers enough to take decisions on issues which are not part of the policy. There could be title related issues where uh, in a cluster I know of uh, it, the land has been allotted by the President of India uh, for the refugees. The transfer of land has not yet happened. Okay. So it has its own issues. So there has to be, as, as Mr. Ch Chaturvedi said, you cannot cover all the issues in, in the policy. Yes, yes. There has to be an, uh, a body uh, empowered enough to take decisions on the ground to ensure that effective implementation of the policy happens. Absolutely. In terms of uh, planning, there are certain things that uh, the developer can plan. And there are other issues in the planning which the, the developer has to depend upon the overall master plan for the city. In terms of infrastructure, uh, laying water mains, power, road access, so these issues have to be tackled at a, a higher level that cannot become part of the cluster. As uh, suggested, there has to be a merging of the overall cluster with the overall plan of, of the city. Uh, what do you think, Mr. Ujja? Do you feel that uh, uh, right now the need of land and need of space in Mumbai is so big that maybe we need to overlook certain issues and maybe try and work with them. Yes, it must be overlooked because you see to get the land of 4,000 and 10,000 meters is a, a very huge question whether you get in Bombay or in the suburbs. <coughs> in suburb now they have said 10,000 meters. That should not be so. It should be 4,000 across the board. So that kind of issue is settled that 4,000 meters across the Bombay, it makes the task easier for the developer to, uh, you know, assemble that kind of a cluster. And in the cluster, there are not only really assemblies. You have to deal with the landlords. You have to deal with the tenants, getting the consent. And the different uh, class of the occupants are there. One building might be, uh, you know, high end. The other building might be the low end or mid end. To, uh, you know, keep them together as it is a huge task by itself. Get them all, so the policy should be clear. It should not be doing the policy on the policy. And sometimes we read that the RTC, uh, RTI people are saying that 
you know, the carrying capacity of the cluster becomes burden on the uh, infrastructure. No, I would say it is contrary that if it becomes uh, cluster development, the infrastructure becomes concentrated on smaller area. Your layout, networks of the pipes and the sewerage line become concentrated. It's much more efficient. If you take the Hong Kong and uh, the other places where the cluster development have taken place, okay. they, were, they have overlooked all these things and they have... That is something I would uh, like to address to you. Do you feel what he's saying that since uh, if the cluster development does happen, actually the infrastructure would not be stressed, but it will become better? Definitely. I think uh, uh, with my experience of working on the uh, mega project at Bindi Bazaar, uh, the cluster, uh, my experience says that cluster development is the way to go, especially in southern part of Mumbai, where you know it's an organic growth. The infrastructure is pretty organic. It's uh, virtually decades old. And rather than doing individual buildings as developments, if you are able to work on a chunk where we are able to lay new roads, new sewerage pipelines, new infrastructure, it's an opportunity where roads will come up quicker, where your infrastructure will get developed faster, and you will get maybe not the buildings as an organic uh, development, but the overall infrastructure as an organic development you will get a sustainable development. In a large cluster, you will be able to implement things which is a sustainable development as what we are planning. You have all your systems which are going to be in place because you have the place, you have the infrastructure to do it. You can use from solars, to you can use to recycling of water, to everything possible to the extent that because it's a cluster, you can do the orientation of the buildings also which are to more sustainable development. So before we take a quick break, uh, Mr. Bhaktani, and we return to this discussion, I would like to ask you, uh, do you think that uh, the responsibility of making a master plan, designing all this and trying to develop everything inside the cluster should fall upon the developer only or it should be the responsibility of the government? Well, I feel that uh, in case it's only about the cluster, I think developer can do a fair job if he's only developing the layout on his own. So I don't think we really need the government for that. But as the points that were mentioned earlier, that you know, for the road that I mentioned, that probably it can have a bigger road inside the layout. But if he doesn't have an access road which the government really wants in the cluster, then it's not going to really help. So creating an infrastructure for the entire cluster can be very uh, can be a, a good job which developers are already doing. But then obviously the outside infrastructure should be the responsibility of the government. And especially, uh, I think, uh, why these policies should come into force much faster is because, you know, today you have not only uh, the developer involved, you have the societies, you have an open land, you have SR, you have a lot of other kind of stakeholders involved in this. So the faster these policies come in, uh, it's not that, you know, a developer should actually take this kind of development and again the policies start changing. A normal building takes four to five years to develop. If it's going to take seven, eight years or ten years for a cluster to develop, the policies are going to change again and which is going to escalate the cost and, you know, change the things. Absolutely. So, you know, if it's a cluster, the development takes care, but the infrastructure has to be the government's part, especially knowing that the premiums that they're charging us now. Okay, okay. So, we will take a short break right now. We will continue this discussion and we will try and find out if uh, uh, how are the developers going to utilize the extra FSI they get and whether it's actually turning out to be lucrative for them or not.